Hi, it's Graham Cox here, co-founder of OptiService, and I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of our latest feature called OptiHaul. It allows you to calculate the optimum haul paths for your cut fill map to save even more time and money in doing field earthworks. So let's get into it. Okay, so we have a field here. Actually, we're going to look at this field here. It's 20 hectares or 50 acres. We have calculated the proposed topography for this area here. It's going to be far irrigated from this end to this end. And there's a tail drain that's going to run there. Cut fill map looks like this. There's quite a bit of cut in the middle because there is a ridge that goes through here. The total earthworks are 500 cubic meters per hectare, which is yeah, quite high for OptiService standards. But because this ridge is going through the middle of the field, we didn't have much choice. Okay, so the new feature can be found under here called Tools Hall Analysis, or you can click on this little scraper with an arrow to tell you the indicate the direction it's going. We're going to calculate on a 10 meter grid. The direction isn't critical, but we're going to run it in the direction of this field, which is actually 66.88 degrees this way. We're going to have a swell factor of 30%. Now that is the swell factor from cutting the soil in the ground to swelling up into the scraper. So the scraper capacity uh, we are running with here is a, a 19 cubic meter. So that's LCM stands for loose cubic meters. So that's the loose soil in the scraper. And that gets, that's after it's swelled up by 30%. Uh, width of the scraper is five meters. The the next parameter is the maximum cut and fill, and we've got that set at 0 0.06 of a meter, which is 60 millimeters or a bit over two inches. So the reason for that is to limit how much cut and fill we take at a time. Or So if we're cutting through a large cut here, like here, it's 0.46, we can't take that at one bite. You know, we're going to have to do a number of passes to take that 0.46 and this limits how quickly we can cut down into that. The next parameter we have is the field efficiency. So that is how much time the machine is actually doing productive work. Uh, now productive work is classed as you know cutting, hauling, filling and returning. That's productive work. But if you're driving somewhere that's not productive, say you're driving over here for some reason, fueling up or whatever, or then you're not working productively on the earthworks, then that takes it into account. 80% is typical. You know, you could go to 90% efficiency if you're doing well. Okay, the next parameters we've got are the operating speeds. We have an average loading speed set at 6 kilometers an hour, a maximum haul speed at 16 kilometers an hour, an average dumping speed of eight kilometers an hour and a maximum return speed of 21 kilometers an hour. Uh, we also have an acceleration time of 12 seconds and a deceleration time of 12 seconds. So what that means is after you've finished loading, it takes 12 seconds to get up to the hauling speed and then another 12 seconds to drop from this hauling speed back to the dumping speed and then another 12 seconds to go from this speed back up to the max return. So that means you don't go straight from this speed to this speed. So that increases the time of the job as you'd expect. Okay, let's click OK and calculate. So this will go away and run thousands of calculations to come up with the optimum all paths. So this is the result. We have these arrows indicating the optimum direction to haul the soil and they're colored by how many loads have to go in that direction. So we can see here these red areas have the most number of loads and we can also actually turn on the labels and show the exact numbers. So it's saying we've got to run over this location nine times, in fact ten times here, uh, to cut that soil down. Some of that will be limited by that 60 millimeters of maximum cut that we had and some of it will be limited by the actual capacity of the machine, of the scraper. So if we turn the cut fill map on in the background, it makes a bit more sense as well. So you can see here that if we look up here, we're going, we're cutting off here and we're filling in here. And the balance line is actually this line here where it starts to swap directions. So this soil is actually coming from the south side here. And 
this area here you can see there's a there's a dividing line somewhere around here where this soil should be going this way and this soil should be going this way and you can see here the dividing lines there so this soil goes should be going this direction and this little bit here should be going this direction so this is a well first this tool there's nothing like this around and we expect it should be able to shave off another 20% in operating time in terms of improved efficiency. You know, previously without these arrows the operator has to look at this cut fill map and guess which way the balance should be and he may guess correctly or he may not. This new hall map takes the guesswork out of it and you don't need an experienced such an experienced operator uh, you can basically hand this map to an ex inexperienced operator and, and it'll immediately show him the optimum direction to haul soil okay then in the bottom left we have the summary results here and we have the field area we have the move volume in bank cubic meters bcm i'll explain that in a second so we've got 10196 that will be the same number as when you calculate your landform design as that'll be the same as your cut volume for the field uh, we have a move rate of 265 bcms per hour we have an area rate of 0.523 hectares per hour and we have an average move distance of 115 meters now these results are a summary of these numbers down here which we'll go through so we calculate the distance for loading, hauling, dumping and returning. The total distance the machine will travel to do those operations. And returning, we'll discuss that a bit later. These notes here will uh, mention down here in the notes section. We'll go through them in a second. Speeds, the average speed of loading six kilometers an hour the average hauling speed of 12.5 kilometers an hour dumping eight and return speed average return speed of 15 kilometers an hour you'll see they're different from these numbers because the acceleration time and the deceleration time reduces these values down to these ones so it takes that into account based on these distances and speeds we can calculate the, these times here in hours and then the other hours is the inefficient time so the 20% when the machine is not actually doing useful work so that gives a total time of 38.4 hours uh, then in this section we just repeat the inputs from here just for reporting purposes this all goes into a report and then here we have the notes so we have BCM which is the bank cubic meters which is the volume of soil in the ground before you cut it. So it's the cutting volume. That's what we normally talk in, in earthworks when we're talking of, when we do a landform design, we have the cut per hectare. That's the, the value we're looking at. It's the bank cubic meters of cut that we're actually moving. This bank cubic meters and loose cubic meters is typically used in civil engineering. So loose cubic meters is actually the soil volume once you've cut it and you've got it in the scraper. So it bulks up, it swells up. And that's what this swell factor is. It's the increase in soil volume going from the ground to the scraper. Then we've got the return. The return distance is explained here. So every load, haul and dump trip is assumed to include a return trip of the same length, which is conservative on the high side of time. Acceleration and deceleration time is the time to accelerate and decelerate between loading, hauling, dumping, returning, loading. In effect, to reduce the average all and return speeds. Field efficiency counts for lost time, shown as other time above. Uh, the imports and exports are assumed to enter the top left corner of the grid. So you can see here the import and export volumes, we've got it to zero, so there's nothing being imported top left of the grid. Top left is defined as you're actually looking, you're standing at the bottom of the field, looking up the main slope arrow. So we're looking up here, so we're, look, we're standing in the drain, we're looking up, so the top left hand corner of the field will actually be there. 
So if we had an import and export volume here, they would be in an, an import would be coming in that corner and export would be going out that corner. And you'd see that in the arrows. You can change this direction of this calculation direction to define which corner that is. Now if I want more control over where the import and exports occur, more than just one corner, I can draw in a borrow pit or a mound of soil using break lines. Okay, thanks for watching. We're really excited about this new feature. We think it's groundbreaking, pardon the pun. Literally, the it will allow inexperienced operators and experienced operators to be more efficient with their earth moving operations uh, to make landforming even more cost effective than it is today with OptiSurface. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at support at optiservice.com or give us a call 